Well, I'm going to give you another reason why oil prices, global oil prices, are going to escalate dramatically. I know you've been hearing about, yeah, they're going to stay down about $60. Maybe they'll even creep up to $75, $80 a barrel, but I think they're going to increase a lot more. Now, actually, I think part of it is going to be due to India. India India has actually came out of the dark ages a long time ago, actually, since uh, you know China's been coming on strong, so has India. And actually, there's been... Um, now alliances between India military and the U.S. military to keep China in check, you know, which I don't know how that's going to go because, you know, every time you hear these new alliances, they change, right? That's what it goes on in a world of globalist politics. It's all a freaking front. But I can tell you one thing, uh, this is actually a danger to our economy because um, as gas prices go up, it's going to take a lot of that disposable spending, uh, disposable income out of the pockets of people who don't even have too much disposable income as it is but uh you know it's uh let me just put it to you this way there's new a new number three oil consumer in the world and importer which is india and uh you noticed uh, i don't know if you noticed this was actually just a few years ago or a couple years ago china surpassed the united states is in far as uh oil consumption you know, the U.S. was the big oil consumer in the world. China surpassed the United States. Now, I'm talking about India here, but what it's going to happen is India is coming on strong, too. And they have a huge population and a growing middle class. And, yes, they might be using small economical cars, but the thing is that's that many more straws that are sucking on whatever kind of oil is out there that can be produced. Now, I know the, oil, the Earth's got plenty of oil. But it's all a matter of how cheap is it to extract. I don't think the earth will ever run out of oil. But it's the cost of extraction. That's that's your freaking whole thing in a nutshell. And, you know, the Saudis aren't going to be able to keep up. They're already indications they're not going to be able to keep up with uh, global demand. And that's why and they're actually losing control of OPEC as things are going uh, hot and heavy, even with Yemen and problems on the northern border with Iraq. And, you know, problems with, you know, Iran trying to make more hit because Iran is part of, of OPEC. You know, it's like they're, uh, it's a weird partner, cartel partnership that they got going with uh, potential, um, you know, enemies to the death, you know, which is really strange that that cartel has even lasted so long. And it has lasted so long because the U.S. kept it together because it protects the dollar. But, you know, I think the writing's on the wall for the dollar. Maybe this is a policy of the elite. Now, this is also the Indian oil price and consumption. Uh, you know, consumption's been going up a lot. And, you know, it's not like, well, it's not going away. You know, you could say the global demand is shrinking, and you could say there's solar panels, and India's investigating solar panels and other methods to... Uh, you know, produce uh, electricity, maybe even hydroelectric dams, but you know, they got a water shortage, there's not going to be too much of that going on. But you know, it's solar, solar energy is too expensive. And the electric cars are too much money, too. I mean, I saw some new articles about electric cars out there, or electric scooters. Uh, a new electric scooter, the retail price is well over $4,000. And you could buy a scooter for 500 bucks. You know, I can tell you one thing. Nobody's going to be buying an electric scooter in India for over $4,000. You could buy over eight gasoline ones that get way over 100 miles to the gallon. And they do have, you know, I mean, but besides, you know, the traditional, I guess with the Western cliche, they see images of India's transportation. you got a lot more modern transportation coming out there for, in a the form of, like, from Honda, you know, there's Honda City, some models out there that aren't available in the United States. And they're far more fuel efficient than what's available in the United States because they're made a little bit lighter. They might not have as many safety features in them because, they're, you know, they're a little bit lighter, so they're more economical. It's almost like the Toyotas and Hondas and Datsuns that came over to USA back in the 70s. They used to really get 50 miles to the gallon because they're so lightweight because they were just like a... You know, a shell, a roller skate, small fill of a four-cylinder engine and a manual transmission inside of it. There wasn't all these, uh, it wasn't stuffed with heavy seats, insulation, and, you know, airbags and all these electronic conveniences and air conditioning and power steering and all that stuff that adds weight. 
But you know, even though these cars are going to be very economical in India, even in more high priced cars and newer cars, it's still that many more straws sipping on the price on, on the same amount of supply of oil. And not to say, I'm not going to argue that, you know, I think there's loads of oil on this earth. There's so much oil that we're never going to run out. I don't think there's, I think peak oil is a myth. But the thing is, you know, even with all the extrapolations and all that type of stuff, you know, where, you know, you can say the demand's going double, triple, whatever, there's a lot of oil on this earth. The problem is, though, the extraction costs. And the extraction costs are going to really cut down on demand because people are going to be driving smaller and smaller cars. But even so, smaller and smaller cars, there's such a growing middle class in India that it's just going to increase that much more demand globally for oil and it's going to affect us here in the United States. Now, I can tell you one thing. It doesn't really make a lot of sense, and I can think maybe it is some kind of setup by the planners that be, or whatever you want to call those. I don't. That's not really the right word. The, that the planners, the global planners, that the, they're trying to set the stage for something. Because I, I'd say that you know the dollar itself. It's it's kind of cool that the dollar is very strong, and you could say the United States has got a lot of purchasing power. And consumers keep buying stuff made in foreign countries that are cheap. You know, they could buy $5 t-shirts and things like that. And they could buy electronics very cheap. I don't think that's going to last freaking forever. No way in hell. And, you know, the writing's on the wall, basically, big time with this whole situation. Because um, you're never going to see the interest rates go up. I can almost tell you, they delayed that from the June 17th deal, uh, the Federal Reserve meeting. It did nothing really happen at that meeting. Now, maybe they're going to raise the interest rates in September. But I can tell you one thing. You know, I think the writing's on the wall for the USA, and I think it's planned by the powers that be. Um, we're going to basically probably be more like on tune with um, India and China maybe in 20 years. Not even, maybe even not even that long. Because I think we're going to have a very, very, very severe recession or depression pretty soon when the markets come down and all that capital disappears but when that happens I think that underlying these phony oil prices that we see are basically I can tell you right now that the uh, there's been ongoing lawsuits about the spot market rigging prices especially in oil since 2000 they've been arguing about that and it was even the former head of the NYMEX was talking about that and he's part of the lawsuit you know bringing about the lawsuit that they rigged the oil prices on the global markets but you know the reality of the situation is despite an economic downturn basically throughout the world there's still that many more straws sipping on the amount of oil that's available and Saudi's not going to be able to keep they really can't keep up they can't keep up and it's actually being shown right now with the, you know, you're seeing the dub price on the WTI go up to 60 bucks, but I actually think that you know, and maybe by next year, we might see record oil prices up to new all-time highs. That's a very unfortunate statement, and I'm not a drama freak trying to freaking uh, scare people with this video or put push doom and gloom, but I think it's reality because even though there's a big slowdown in China, it's not as much of a catastrophic slowdown as you think and you know the other thing is the Chinese got plenty of cash reserves and you know what the government's spending on which freaking eats up a lot of consumption of oil and also keeps the uh, economy going in, in, in China they spend a lot on the military they're building a lot of those islands out there which is you know a fight you know in the Spratly Islands which is going to be a fight over oil and you know, they're looking to challenge the U.S. Navy and the U.S. military, and uh, that's why the U.S. is getting together with India. But you know, all this is leading to a global catastrophic event that's going to occur, I think, in the near future, where oil prices are going to go astronomically high. You know, way before, nobody would even believe oil can go up to $40 a barrel if you're talking decades ago. No, 35, 40, they would never believe that stuff. Not in a million years. 100, they thought that would be crazy. 
You know, even like that, that many years before 2008, they thought that was nuts that oil can go up to $100 a barrel. It might go to 200 or more. So, I don't know what to tell you exactly as far as how to prep for this because it's going to be one difficult situation. And, uh, you know, I don't think anybody, everybody can afford electric cars and maybe people shouldn't get electric cars because I don't know how susceptible they are to EMP from nature or, you know, military attacks. But, uh, you know, it's going to be one thing I think where possibly we might have to go back to old school where the farmers provide us the fuel here locally in the United States through uh, for diesel engines. Um, because I can tell you one thing, transportation is absolutely essential for not only the movement of goods, of retail goods, but also the movement of materials to factories, also just for general commerce, for people getting to work, exchanging ideas, you know, doing labor at different places. They got job sites they got to go to. You know, it's, it's a major cost. Well, it's not a major cost, but it will be a major cost if oil goes up to $200 a barrel and gasoline is $8 a gallon. I think this is going to happen by next year, without a war even in the Middle East, because the demand is actually there. And I'm going to tell you, those phone, those spot prices on the market, they're phony. The oil price spot market is phony. Just like the gold and silver spot price market is phony. It's phony. You know, if you look at the P&Ls of what's just going out, I know people argue back and forth about, yeah, they... It's a byproduct of copper when they talk about silver and stuff, but not always. But you know what? The copper prices are supp vastly suppressed too. I know that's partly because it's Dr. Copper and it's the, uh, you know, it's the global economy and things like that are affected by the, that which which affects the copper prices. But all in all, the copper mines aren't doing that well. All these prices are way too low, and. That's why I think there's going to be a major shoot up in the commodities again. And once it starts shooting up, it's going to take a life of its own. And as usual, you know, there's going to be out the people out there pumping it up farther than it should go to. Now, that's not going to be me, but I just realized that, you know, if you're one of those people that invested in those metals right now, you're going to be okay if you're in it. Probably not the too far future. It's been a long period of adjustment as it is, correction period as it is. But, you know, when I'm looking at... Uh, what I always uh, theorize, though, and I don't know if it's too much of a theory because it's, uh, you know, it's more of an axiom. If you look at uh, some of the information going back historically, oil prices have always led the, uh, the metals prices and other commodity prices, too, because so many things are dependent upon energy to get out of the ground, including the metals. And I think that, you know, this the new news where China's, you know, recent news of several last several years where China surpassed the United States in oil consumption. And now you got a new number three um, oil consumer, India. And looking at the population of those two countries, I think India is probably going to surpass the United States in oil consumption too. It's not going to matter how much we can serve over here because there's that many more people coming on board. And you know what? In addition to that, there's a whole new middle class coming on board in uh, Saudi Arabia, Yemen, Iraq, Iran, Egypt, all the countries that are, in Libya, all the countries that are producing oil themselves, they were mainly uh, exporters and not too many people were actually uh, consuming the oil domestically, but now it's going to be coming about that they will be consuming the oil met domestically because there's a growing middle class even in those countries, despite the civil unrest. So that just means there's that much global demand across the board everywhere in some of the most populous countries in the world, where, you know, the majority of the population in the world basically is concentrated in uh, Asia, you know, India and China. And just a little common sense, when you got that growing middle class, whether they consume oil with you know, 70 mile per gallon cars or 100 mile per gallon cars or scooters or whatever the hell it is. Hey, if you got millions and tens of millions of people becoming new consumers every year, guess what's going to happen? The price is going to go up. And it, it isn't going to matter. It's not going to matter what the stats are over here in the United States. But I can tell you one thing 
They've been playing games with these stats for a long, long time. I know the major media is telling you the global demand has been down. The global demand has been down on oil for years. And all of a sudden it dropped. It dropped because of, I'm going to tell you what it was. You know, I hate to say it, but, you know, Russia is basically right. It was it was dropped on purpose to uh, basically, I think that was one of the main reasons. It was also to uh, attack the, uh, you know, the, the, the uh, the, the, the fracking industry in the United States, the Saudis probably had an oblique reason there, but I think it was in cooperation with the U.S. to actually hurt Russia and thwart some of their military ambitions. I don't, but I don't think they're going to be able to hold this down because there's too many people in the world that are demanding to be part of this middle class, and there's that many more straws that are sipping on that same amount of oil that's being produced. And like, even though we're not going to run out of oil, it's going to be expensive because you got to get it out of the ground, and it costs more energy to get it out of the ground. And, you know, some of the new technology, even with fracking, it's starting to become illegal in some places in, in, in the country, even in our country, because now they're associating it with earthquakes and sinkholes and all this other kind of crap and unstable land and all this other garbage. So... You know, that bodes pretty bad for U.S. production, though, even though the U.S. right now is doing very well in production. I don't know how long, I don't think that's going to be around for 10 years. I don't think so. So anyway, um, there's just keep your eyes out for this deal because uh, as fast as oil prices came down uh, unexpectedly, basically, you know, basically after Putin invaded uh, Ukraine and <laughs> I can figure what happened there. Guess what? They can go back up. Even though that's probably not going to be the will of the U.S. that they go back up. I think the market is going to just overtake whatever the will of the U.S. is going to be. Because OPEC is falling apart. Saudi's not going to be able to keep up production. And despite whatever Russia does, you know, for demand or whatever they're trying to do to produce, you got too many more people in India and China you know, getting in the middle class, using up that oil supply. You got it also even in the oil producing nations. You got a new ups, upcoming middle classes going on there. Also in Brazil. Whether we got a global turn down or not, we got a growing middle class. And they're all demanding to drive vehicles, whether they're small or not, and they're not taking out much fuel. There's that many more straws sipping on the same amount of supply. So do expect... Um, I think we're going to hit record oil prices here, even without a, a major conflict in the Middle East. They're going to start creeping up. And, of course, there's always the other thing about global cooling, which is going to put a extreme demand on heat oil in the wintertime. We've been getting uh, crazier and crazier winters. they got crazier winters down under right now. they got... Uh, you know, Easter Island uh, in the uh, southeastern Pacific. You know, they got a, they broke a 30 a record, all-time record by 30 degrees. Um, you know, even the weather itself is going to affect the demand on oil prices. So, I don't know. It's going to be a freaking problem. I'll tell you that. And uh, so, if you're a prepper, um, you're not stupid. I can tell you that right now. You're definitely not stupid. Uh, this is something to keep in mind because uh, it's coming up on us. And when it comes up, it's going to come up pretty fast. Because just do remember, I, you know, I looked into a lot into this stuff about the uh, oil price market rigging. And I read a lot about it. It's it's not some alternative media conspiracy theory. They've been having ongoing lawsuits against against that, you know, that the oil price market's been rigged. And also it's a metal market, metals markets since 2000 and I mean there's some top people been alleging this and I always say is you can't rig something forever you know when you hold it down you hold it down you maybe hold it down for a long time maybe a few years maybe a couple years but then that's it goes back up so uh, do be prepared do expect that we're gonna hit I, I think it's I, I think they it ain't gonna last too much longer there's too many factors out there China and India demand and 
also the global cooling. Oil's going to go up through the roof.